I'll see you again whenever spring breaks through, my friend. <laughs> Good afternoon, tubers. Madam Roy back again. Back to you with another vlog video. Let's see what we got date-wise today. Today is the 27th of January, 2017. It's a little after 2 uh, p.m., and that's mainly because I've been kind of busy today. Um, you may have noticed that I'm filming with the DCR TRV 280, and that is mainly because I've had lots of requests to show off and actually use this camera. I know this has been uh, the subject of some scrutiny on my channel. Some of you guys actually don't like it when I film with this camera, but a lot of you said you wanted to see it again, so I thought I'd go ahead and break it out today. Um, if you don't know that song that I sang in the beginning, that's because I had just finished watching The Jerk with Steve Martin. If you guys have never seen that movie, it's definitely worth uh, looking at. It's an old movie. It's from 1979. And there's a scene in that with uh, Bernadette Peters, and he's sitting in the tub. He's so happy because he thinks he's found the love of his life. And they're both singing that song, and she's actually writing him a John Deere letter and getting ready to leave him while he's actually taking his morning bath. So, I don't know, I just had to do it. And I just kind of felt like I wanted to sing that song today. Well, there's a few things I want to show you guys. Um, some changes that I'm going to be making in the near future, some things that are going on outside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'll talk to you guys in just a couple of minutes. All right, so the first change I'm making is I'm actually going to be getting rid of this particular monitor. I have a friend that wants to buy my um, Dell Studio Hybrid, the one that I have sitting right over there, but he wants a larger monitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him that with it, and for now I'm just going to go ahead and put maybe like a small 17-inch uh, LCD screen there that I have. But I'm not, I'm not worried about it because I know I'll be able to find another monitor like that at a thrift store. And to be perfectly honest with you, I was never really that crazy about this monitor. It doesn't have the best contrast ratio. And because this, this ASUS system is going to become my backup video editing, I really need a computer that has a much sharper picture on there. Actually, sorry, a monitor that has a better picture. So this one's going to be going at least for now. And uh, we'll see what I replace with it. I'm sure it'll be something that is a lot better than this. What you doing? Baxter. This is a new thing he likes to do. If he sees the squirrels outside, which I really don't see any of them right now, but he likes to just sit in the window here and wait for him. This is something that um, Simon and to a little bit lesser extent Cassie did back in the day. But since they're not outdoor cats, they really need to have this kind of stimulation. I try to play with them with the um, laser pointer and they have their mice, so they do get a lot of playtime. But I think they still miss that interaction with the uh, wildlife, don't you, big buddy? Gosh, I still can't get over those ears. If you guys look closely, he actually has little hairs that stick up on the end of his ears right there. You can see it right there, and then right on that one. He has definitely got some bobcat in him. Pss, 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 pss. Don't you, buddy? Yes, you do. Yep, he's get he's little by little getting better with the camera. This is a pretty big camcorder, so I'm actually surprised this isn't freaking him out. We'll go ahead and let you be. I'm gonna let you look at the, your wildlife. I know you need to do that. Oh, oh, what's that? What what? He's actually interested. What is it? Oh, oh, oh he's playing with the lens cap. <laughs> he wants to play with the lens cap. Go play with the lens cap. Look, Baxter. Look, look, look. This cat will play with almost anything. It's absolutely amazing. You are a funny little boy, but we love you, Baxter. All right, go ahead and check the wildlife out, and we'll catch up with you on a future vlog. And just so I don't leave anything out, LT is still here. She's being her usual cranky self. Isn't that right, baby? What? You gonna say hi? You gonna say hi to everybody? No, she's just being very lazy today. She's actually been, had a really bad attitude the last few days, so I've been just kind of leaving her alone. I hope she's feeling all right. I may need to take her to the vet for a checkup because she's been sneezing quite a bit lately, and she's just a little bit lethargic. So, I don't know, LT. A vet trip might be in your future for sure. Well, going outside today, it is a drastic difference from yesterday when it was 65, 70 degrees and sunny. Now the clouds have started to roll in. And uh, we're sitting right at about 42 degrees, so it's actually a big, big temperature difference. 
And that's one problem that uh, we tend to have down here is the temperature fluctuations going from hot to cold, cold to hot, because that's the kind of stuff that can actually get you sick. Give you a quick update. Dad's uh, truck is doing really, really well. Glow plugs are still working well since we put in that new relay. That was a little bit of a challenge, but we got that in. I don't know if I showed you guys this in a previous blog, but he did wind up getting some uh, new tires. The ones he had on here were about halfway worn, and they were absolutely terrible in snow. These are some uh, Cooper... Let's see, what are these? These are Cooper Discoverer uh, RT tires, and these have a lot of meat on them. You can see right there, a lot of tread, and it's got the scattered pattern, which is actually really, really good for uh, snow and especially ice. And this thing really, really performs well now in uh, snow and ice. As a matter of fact, the last time we had this out, we didn't even need to put it in four-wheel drive, and that's when we had almost a foot of snow on the ground. But um, truck's still doing well. Um, last year, we had to do a little bit of body work to it. Um, you can see right here, probably going to have to touch this up again because there's a little bit of rust forming again, but this was just kind of preliminary. Eventually, we want to have it, probably going to take it someplace like Mako and have them redo at least the fenders, panels here. Um, but this is basically just um, fiberglass with like Bondo inside. Like I said, it was just a temporary fix until we can actually get... Uh, get this done properly. Well, I can see my buddies here, so I'm going to pause the vlog for a minute, and I will talk to you guys a little later. All right, Tuber, so I just finished up with my buddy Ron, and uh, he gave me a laptop that he wants me to work on. He said it's a friend of his. It's one of these uh, Dell, let's see what model this is, the 1545s. These are really cool because they actually had interchangeable lids. You could actually put almost any color lid on here. I know they had purple, pink, black, and I think they even had like a aquamarine blue one. But that's not really want to, what I want to talk about in this segment. Uh, something really cool uh, happened to me a couple of days ago. Um, I was actually uh, online, and I think it was, yeah, it was basically an old YouTube video that somebody had uploaded, but it was originally a, like an um, art project for a college that a student did. And it was, uh, I believe it was entitled Fish Kill Flea. Um, basically what it was, it was about the former Duchess Mall, which used to be in, um, I don't think it was actually, yeah it was, it was actually in Fishkill, New York, which was very close to where I used to live. I used to live in a little town called uh, Carmel, New York, which is maybe about 20 minutes away. And uh, this whole, doc it was basically a documentary, and it was about how the mall had been turned into a flea market, and how, you know, it had been fairly successful. And I've come to find out that this flea market is still going on in the mall, though it's actually moved to the uh, former James Way location, whereas when this was filmed, it was in the former service merchandise location. And it just really brought back some very, very fond memories from my childhood. And I know a lot of you uh, that watch my channel that uh, live up in New York probably remember this mall uh, as well. Um, just a little backstory on it. The mall opened back around 1972. Um, and it was always a small mall. I mean, this, this thing was really tiny. I, I don't think it had any more than about 70 stores. It literally had one main corridor... Um, it had two like little hallways at the end, it, at each end of the anchor stores, and then it had just a little inlet in the middle where you go into the, the center court where it had like a little fountain. It wasn't even really a food court in the mall. That little center entrance, there were some restaurants. I remember there was a, a pizza place on the right, Chinese food place on the left. Um, we used to go to a dollar store in there all the time, and that's actually how I started uh, learning about dollar stores. The very first one I ever went to uh, was in that mall back in the day, and we're talking about mid, maybe mid to late 90s, so probably 95 to like 98, 99. And I just, I had to share this with you guys because it really moved me when I saw this. I was actually seeing pictures of the mall. Now, unfortunately, about five years ago, they actually tore down the center of the mall, just leaving the uh, the old service merchandise and the old Jamesway location. And in the middle, they've actually put in a Home Depot now. But the Jamesway Anchor Store is actually um, still the flea market. As a matter of fact, I kid you not, I've been there before, 
and that's actually where I got this camcorder that I'm filming with now was at that particular flea market. Um, and the really cool thing about that, I'll never forget when I went in there, is they actually still have all of the James Way signs up inside, like the banners inside say James Way. Um, they even had some of the uh, checkout stands there that still said James Way and the uh, the internal phones as well. And that store closed 20 years ago, and I, it was just amazing. I absolutely could not, uh, could not believe that they still had that stuff. So, hey, you know what? I got a great idea. If you guys have fond memories of a mall, or a shopping center that has uh, since closed maybe something from your childhood go ahead and post it down in the uh, comments section I really love to hear it because I'm really getting into learning about malls and the struggles that they're actually having to stay afloat now and unfortunately in this country it's really really sad you really don't see uh, you haven't seen any malls there has not been I bet you guys a lot of you guys don't know this there has not been a new mall that's opened since 2005 and actually, since then, quite a few of them closed. I'm thinking of things like Rolling Acres. Um, I can't think of the name of the other one now, but Rolling Acres is the real big one. Rolling Acres was a uh, mall in Ohio that was very popular and kind of died out all of a sudden. So go ahead and stick that in the comments, and um, we'll see what kind of uh, conversations that generates. I'm really, cool, really uh, keen to find out. Well, Baxter's over here looking for my attention. I'm going to go ahead and pause the vlog again, and I will talk to you guys a little bit later. All right, tubers, I just heard something in the garage. Let's see what Dad's up to. <laughs> hey, you want to show them what you're up to? <laughs> I heard the horn. Go ahead and push it again. Let's see what you got. Oh, well, show the switch. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay. There you go. Dad finally fixed the Auga horn in the 46 Plymouth. Yeah, the other... Go ahead, you can tell him. I'll tell you what there. <laughs> this heavy-duty switch is supposed to hold 40 amps, which is more than enough to blow the horn. You only need about 10 amps to blow it. So this is a switch I put in. It's supposed to be heavy-duty, but guess what? Made in China? It's a piece of crap. Yeah, it, it blew. How long did it last? About four times. That's pathetic. So, you wonder why we <laughs> PPT is down the drain. I, I'm sure happy of that. Because the less we have a China, the better it is. Yeah, unfortunately, this cheap Chinese stuff does not work half the time. <laughs> I, get, I get burnt more often than not. Because so much is shipped from China nowadays, and I can't stand it. I can't wait to troll America again. God bless America. Amen to that. Absolutely. Well, show them the switch that uh, that you put in now. Well, it's on the deck. Okay, let's see what we got in here. Well, here's the button. Okay, where, which one is it? The, the metal one. You see the black one? Yes. The regular horn. This one under it? Regular horn, yeah. There's the Ahuga horn, if you guys can see that. And the, and the black one is the regular one. So, regular horn. And the Auga horn. Okay, yeah, we're gonna let Dad uh, do the siren real quick. The siren is the other button, but I got a lockout switch, so it doesn't accidentally go on. So people don't play with it too much. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> I have to put a little warning on this video. If you're if you're wearing headphones, go ahead and turn your volume down right now. <laughs> All right, tubers, I'm gonna head inside. Oh, thanks for showing that to us. All right, tubers, I hope you really enjoyed that state segment. I think I'm gonna call this vlog the nostal. I'm feeling nostalgic because the nostalgic for the Duchess Mall and coupled with that 46 Plymouth, I think that's the ideal name for this. So hope you. Oh, excuse me. I <laughs> hope you guys really enjoyed this. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.